Let's take a look at power, efficiency, and force versus distance graphs. So power is defined as the rate at which work is done. Because work is a transfer of energy, we can also say that power is the rate at which energy is transferred. So in other words, power measures how rapidly energy moves into or out of an object or system. Now because it's a rate, we can write down power in a couple different ways. The way that we're normally going to write power in this class is that power is equal to work over time. That's going to be fine for our purposes. Now, in other courses, in more advanced courses, we'll write power as an actual rate, as a derivative. Power is the derivative of work with respect to time. We're not going to go into that kind of math in this course, so we'll just stick to power is equal to work over time. The unit of power is the watt, represented with a w, and power is a scalar. Now this unit, going back to that, a watt can be related to units we've seen before. By looking at the power equation, we know that power is work per time. So let's see, well power has units of watts, and we know work has units of joules, and time has units of seconds. So that means that a watt is equal to a joule per second. And if we wanted to go even further, well, we know that a joule is a newton times a meter, so that means a watt is a newton times a meter per second. And going even further, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, so a watt is a kilogram meter per second squared times a meter per second. And if we simplify that, a watt, in terms of fundamental units, is a kilogram meter squared per second cubed. Normally, though, we'll just write out watt. So I said that uh, power is a measurement of how rapidly energy moves. So if something has a low power, if the power is low in a situation, that means we are slowly transferring energy somehow. If the power is high, that means we're rapidly transferring energy. The energy is moving very quickly from one place to another. Now we can manipulate this power equation to come up with another useful equation. So power is the work per time. Well, work is the force on an object times the displacement of the object times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. So let's write it that way. And if we rearrange things a little bit, force times displacement over time times the cosine of theta. Well, displacement per time is velocity. So we can say that the power is equal to the force on an object times its velocity times the cosine of theta, where theta is now the angle between the force and the velocity. If the force and the velocity are in the same direction, then theta is equal to zero and the cosine of zero degrees is equal to one. And so this simplifies to P, power, is equal to F, force on the object, times V, the velocity of an object. And we can also use this equation to check the units. Let's see, make sure that they work. So power has units of watts, okay. Force has units of newtons. And velocity has units of meters per second. So a watt should equal a newton meter per second. Well, a newton meter is a joule. So we have a watt is equal to a joule per second, which is what we saw before. Now let's look at efficiency. So efficiency is defined as the ratio of the useful work that's done, or that comes out, to the total work that went in, or the total amount of energy that went in. And you can also write it as a ratio of the powers. So it can also be said that it's the ratio of the useful power that comes out to the total power that went in. And we can write this as an equation, or as two equations actually, uh, because it's a ratio. And we can also determine what the units are of this efficiency thing that we've just defined. Well, the units of efficiency would be either joules divided by joules, if we're using the work equation, or watts divided by watts, if we're using the power equation. Either way, the units cancel out. Efficiency has no units. It's also a scalar. And it's a little tough to understand unless you start applying it to examples. So let's look at a very simple example. Let's say we have a crane, and this crane is lifting a heavy object. Now, the crane, let's say it's electric, so there's an 
electrical wire that's providing it with energy. And let's say that electrical power input provides 5,000 joules of energy to the crane. And while it's providing the 5,000 joules of energy, the crane does 2,000 joules of work by lifting an object. Okay, well, the efficiency is the ratio of the useful work that was done to the total work that went in. Well, the useful work that was done in this situation was lifting the heavy object, the 2,000 joules of work. The amount of work that went in, the total work that was provided to the crane, was 5,000 joules. So the efficiency was 2,000 joules divided by 5,000 joules, or 0 0.4. Now, it's customary to provide efficiency as a percent, so this would be 40% efficiency. And let's finish up with force versus distance graphs. And in all of these force versus distance graphs, we're going to assume situations where theta is equal to zero degrees. And by theta, I mean the angle between the force and the displacement. So kind of the simplest possible situation. You're applying a force in the direction that the object moves. So in these situations, let's draw a couple graphs of force versus distance. Let's say we have the simplest possible graph right here, just a constant force over the distance. Well, what this is saying is that the object moves over some distance, and as the distance increases, as it moves, the force is not changing. You're applying the same exact force as it moves. Let's look at a slightly different one. Let's say we have this graph right here. Well, what this says is that as the object moves, you're applying more and more force. The force is increasing and increasing and increasing as it moves further and further. In this graph over here, it's saying that as the object moves, as the distance increases, the force decreases. So it's moving and moving and moving, and as it moves, the force that you're applying decreases. So we can even draw this one where it goes under the axis, and this is saying that as the object travels, the force at first is big and positive. And then as time goes by, the force actually changes direction to become negative. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it turns out that in a force versus distance graph like these that I've shown you, the area under the curve represents the work that is done. Now, this is easiest to see with a constant graph. So let's go back to a constant graph. Here, the force is not changing as the object moves. If we look at this graph and we think about the area under the curve here, well, the horizontal width of this shape represents the displacement of the object, right? It's how far it's traveled. The vertical height of this shape represents the force that was applied. So if I were to find the area of that under the curve, that would be the force times the displacement, which is the work. Now, this is much better explained with more advanced math that we're not going to get into, but I will say that work, at its heart, really is an integral. It's the integral of force with respect to the displacement. And that can be written this way with a cosine, or more succinctly, this way with a dot product. Now, if you're not familiar with these math ideas, don't worry about it. I'm just putting it out there because if you keep taking physics, you'll definitely see this again.